Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And I was going through the uh, Data Guy mailbag, going through some old comments, uh, uh, video ideas people had, and one idea I had was understanding how to use Airflow with Google BigQuery and Google Dataflow. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna show you how you can build a DAG that is going to what we're gonna do is we are going to use Airflow to upload some data into BigQuery. Um, it's just some you know, basic dummy data, you'll see it just hard coded into the actual DAG. Um, and then we are going to use the data flow uh, operator to actually start a Google data flow job that's going to select the employee names and salaries from that BigQuery table, filtering to include only employees with salaries greater or equal to a thousand, just kind of showing how you can layer Google data flow on top of a BigQuery environment and manage it all via Airflow. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, and so the first thing you're going to want to do um, is just add the Google uh, required, not sorry, the Google uh, package to your requirements file. Um, so that will be um, something that looks like this. So patch here for providers Google, don't need to hard pin it, save it here. Uh, and then we can go into our DAGs folder and start creating our DAG. Um, so we'll call this just dataflow dag.py and then and get started creating it. So first thing we're going to be doing is what we do with all of our DAGs and that is importing all of our different uh, packages and requirements. So here, we're going to import annotations, OS for interacting with the operating system, casting messages and pulling messages out of it, date time for a standardized date time format, the classic DAGs model because we're working with Airflow and you need a DAG. Um, and then a series of different BigQuery operators. So empty data set operator, empty table, data set, table operator, job operator, and then the data flow start SQL job operator and trigger rule. So we can use more advanced Airflow trigger rules. Then once we're done with that, we'll also need to set a series of different variables. So here you're going to, and this is, you'll notice here that I'm pulling from environment variables. So you'll save your actual project ID under uh, this key system test GCP project as an environment variable. Same thing for your environment ID. DAG ID, we're just setting as example, data flow SQL, uh, location in Europe plus three, doesn't really matter whatever location you're using. And then down here, we're using these variables to dynamically generate our data flow SQL job name, data set name, table input, table output. So it makes it easier if you just need to edit one of these variables, it'll automatically propagate down into these different uh, inputs and outputs and build these strings for you. And then we also have our insert rows query where this is that dummy data we're using, those employees and their salaries, and then building that insert statement with Jinja templating as well here. So that's kind of all of our different setup we do, uh, all done. Now, our next step is going to be actually building our DAG, the fun stuff. Um, so here we have with DAG, just a very simple DAG declaration statement, putting our DAG ID, start date, catch up, uh, just tagging it as a data flow SQL job. Um, and then what we'll do is create our BigQuery data set. So we're gonna use that BigQuery create empty data set operator here to create an empty data set. Uh, so this is where we're going to be inserting our data into, I'll delete that, so that's why I didn't automatically do it. Um, and so just basically creating an empty landing space, this DAG is meant to act as kind of a self-contained unit. So obviously probably would already have a landing space in practice, but just doing it here. Um, and then we're also going to create an empty table operator or use an empty table operator to create an empty table. Um, and in this case, what we're going to do is give it the data set ID of that BigQuery data set we just created. And then the BigQuery SQL table input that we dynamically built by adding our environment ID um, into this input. So into this input field. So here, schema name, just employee name, mode required, and then salary, integer, toe, mode, noble. So it can be equal to zero if you have a salary of zero, which is pretty bleak if you're working for literally zero dollars, but I digress. Um, Next, we're going to define our insert BigQuery job. So here, insert query job using the BigQuery insert job operator. We have our task ID configuration where we're using that insert rows query that we defined up here. And then use legacy SQL false, priority batch, um, and location. Again, that location that we defined there in Europe plus three. So that is our data loaded up into BigQuery. Now we get to do the data flow stuff, which is using the data flow SQL 
start job operator. So here we have start SQL, data flow start SQL job operator, um, and then we have you know, task ID job name that we defined earlier, and then our query here, this is what I was talking about, where we are going to be uh, selecting the uh, employees who have salaries that are greater or equal to 1,000. You can see the salary greater or equal to 1,000 from that BigQuery and then Jenkins templating the project ID BigQuery data set and the table input here with, again, the optics for our project data set table as well. Um, and then key thing here, if you want to use the, any of the XCOM values after, is do XCOM push here. So that way you can link this to downstream tasks via the XCOMs rather than needing to go through or rely on any other kind of mechanism. So now that we've gotten our data flow SQL job done, uh, we can then delete our BigQuery table using the BigQuery delete table operator. Um, and then you know, set this trigger rule, trigger rule all done. So make sure all these jobs have actually completed before deleting it, obviously. So we don't get a deletion of anything that's in flight. Um, and that's just kind of best practices whenever you're dealing with this kind of flow, have those safeguards, use Airflow, uh, Airflow's capabilities like those trigger rules to programmatically, you know, add guardrails against things going wrong, right? Um, and then down here, we're also going to add the BigQuery data set, uh, delete BigQuery data set operator. So here, just deleting that data set as well as our individual table. And then we're going to use a chain operator to chain them all together. Boom. Now we got everything set up. So. Well, I, well, I wanted to show you the SQL here, as, here. I also wanted to show you what this could look like if you wanted to go more Python native. Um, and so for that, there's a couple adjustments you will have to use. Um, so if you're interested in using Python for some of your actions instead of Dataflow, um, what you can do is, so in this case, let's say, you know, hey, instead of some SQL commands, you want to edit, you want to change your data using Python. Well, in that case, what you would do, is so this is just an example of, you know, hey, fine, let me duplicate this file actually. So copy, paste, uh, and then we'll data flow Python. So here, the big edits you're going to be making, and, I, and there's some edits to the uh, actual requirements that I'll show you in a second. but. Here, you're gonna be uploading your local file system to GCS, then using the Beam run Python operator. So Beam is basically, is Google's version, uh, is Apache Beam. Dataflow is Google's version of Apache Beam. So this is essentially same, for Python jobs, you have to use these Beam run Python operator, but for SQL, you can use the Dataflow one, even though at the end of the day, they're both using the same underlying project, uh, which is why I wanted to kind of show you this. So here, the Beam run Python operator, here you would have a Python script that you know, you're know you using to manipulate your data, setting the output fields. Uh, you can set your Python requirements, Python interpreter, um, and then your data flow configuration as well. So same configuration you know, that you did with uh, the data flow operator. And then after you've started that Python job, um, you can either start it locally or you know in the cloud. So if you wanna run it on a database or run it on your local machine, um, you kind of have these two options here. And then once you're done, you have the stop uh, data flow job. Um, so similar output, similar way, you know, it's going to push it to XCOM um, or here, but you just have to have the stop data flow job when it is a Python pipeline. Um, and yeah, just kind of want to show you that, that the two different flavors there of how you can use uh, data flow with Airflow, BigQuery, GCS. Um, and now I'll just quickly pop over to the UI, show you what this looks like as in the Airflow UI, and then also just show you the connection you'll need to set up to use all this. So here in the Airflow UI, we have our Dataflow DAG. So you can see it here, relatively simple uh, linear DAG, uh, should you know run pretty fine, as long as you have your Google Cloud connection set up. So make sure when you're setting up this Google Cloud connection that the resource or that the Google project ID that you're giving it um, is actually authenticated into BigQuery and Dataflow. Um, so we'll just call this Google.com. Um, and then the only things we necessarily need here, and this will differ based on how you authenticate into uh, Google. So you could be using a key file, you could be using a project ID. Probably gonna need to have a project ID, so you're gonna need to put your project ID in here. 
um, then either your key file path, key file JSON, um, and then the impersonation chain as well. So example impersonation chain looks something like this. So if you're using the impersonation chain, you don't actually need to fill out any of the other ones because your key JSON, everything you can see is all included within this impersonation chain. Um, so just something to note there, but basically just set up this Google connection, test it, make sure it has the proper credentials and then your DAG should work just as well as mine did. Um, so I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.